Let's begin what's trending. With reactions trailing the submission by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu requesting the election tribunal to dismiss the petition seeking to nullify his election on the grounds that he did not secure 25% of lawful votes cast in the federal capital territory, the president in his final written address against the two petitions filed by the candidates of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and his counterpart of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubaka, warned that nullifying the February 25th elections on the grounds that he did not secure 25% of the lawful votes cast in the federal capital territory could lead to absurdity, chaos, anarchy, and alteration of the very intention of the legislature. Tinubu also stated that the two petitions seeking the nullification of his victory are not familiar with the country's electoral laws. Rufai, I'm coming to you, but let me take a Carlos tweet because this is actually the bone of contention because as you recall, our sister publication this day put out a tweet you know, with that statement and it's garnered more than 2.5 million comments. Well, Carlo wrote, the president of the largest economy in Africa is telling foreign investors that if the courts in a legal ruling in his own nation remove him from office because he failed to meet the conditions set by his nation to become president, there will be anarchy and chaos. In essence, if he is allowed to break the law and remain in office in contravention of the legal rules of his nation against the oath of office he took, there will be no chaos and anarchy. Over to you, Rufai. I'll, you know, I'll take... People became lawyers on Twitter yesterday, mm -hmm. giving their own different interpretation. Dr. Bhatti, I heard your interpretation this morning. Uh, Rufai. For me, it is the court, the Presidential Election Tribunal, that will rule on the interpretation of the 25%. Yes. Whatever they come out with, for or against, mm. I don't think interpretation of the laws of the country will cause any anarchy. Absolutely Let's stop not. Fanning the embers and everything. I know yeah. the, that statement was from the depositions of his lawyer, President Tinubu's lawyer, Wole Olani because this they are having their final depositions in mm. before they make a judgment on it. It is for him to make his case. You can say he was making his case while he was arguing, but it is the court that will rule. And whatever the court rule, there's not going to be anarchy. I've heard a lot of people argue and said, oh, yes, the court, the court of public opinion and all of that, it reads the body and temperature of the nation. The law is the law. If it rules for or against, the law will reign supreme. Mm. Uh, it's not happened before, blah, 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 blah. Those are just conversations. Because it is still the courts that will rule. All we can call on the judiciary to do is to stand tall. Across board. Yes, opinions are divided for and against and all of that. But we need to be able to build a country where the rule of law will stand tall. Because we don't do it for ourselves. We also do it for the way other countries see us. And when they see we have a weak judiciary system, what happens is that investors will not want to come. So the judiciary should also know that they are not only ruling based on the law now. They are also ruling based on what will become the outlook of Nigeria. So they will be the one to determine this 25%. We've never had a time where we've tested it. People can only make other inferences, like, you know, they've started the part of the constitution that says, oh, uh, treat it as, as long as, as though it's this, it's that, and all of that. You can have all the legal jargons. But it is when the court rules, conjunctively or disjunctively, we can look at the narrative. All we should now do is not to heat up the polity. Mm -hmm. Let us wait for the court to rule. And let's also forget, after the court rules, there's also a Supreme Court there. Yes, absolutely. After this judgment, let us remember the fact that Nigeria will continue to exist. And Nigeria will continue to grow. But the question is, how do we see ourselves after things like this? That's what matters the most. Yes. And in building a country, it sees a collective work. All right, Dr. Bata, I'd like your interpretation again in terms of what um, Tinubu's counsel wrote in that uh, um, final submission. Um, I understand that, you know, anarchy can be interpreted in different ways, but I'll just take one more tweet of people that were trying to clarify uh, Tinubu's win. This is from uh, Pastor Okezie, who wrote, Tinubu got 25% in 29 out of the 36 states and FCT. Atiku got 25% in 21 out of the 36 states and FCT. Peter Obi got 25% in 17 out of the 36 states and FCT. Nigeria has 37 subnational entities. 
36 states and FCT. Only President Bola Ametinu met this constitutional requirement, 24 out of 36 states and FCT, and having the highest number of votes cast, he was declared winner and returned elected by the constitutional body, a.k.a. INEC, what is difficult to understand here. Dr. Abati. Okay, a number of clarifications. I think people must refrain from reading headlines and from headlines jumping into conclusions. That creates, it misleads a lot of people because uh, you see a headline in the newspaper, you see chaos, you see anarchy, you just conclude <laughs> and you start talking. Courts of law don't take their decisions on the basis of public opinion. You're right. Even if the judges themselves are members of citizens, they act on the basis of jurisdiction and the rule of law. And at the highest level, the Supreme Court has its own original jurisdiction. And the courts exist also as modulators, as stabilizing forces, you know, even as they discharge uh, their functions under the uh, Constitution. I tried to give a summary earlier on. He said, for example, Section 1342B, you know, cannot be read disjunctively, that it must be read conjunctively. Because to do otherwise is to misinterpret and misrepresent the intention of the framers of the Constitution. The basic principle is what is the intention of the lawmaker, the framers of the law? What do they intend to say? It's for the court to decide on that. And Olani Kwekunwe said, you know, uh, provided his own uh, defense, citing Section 31, which lists 36 states, Section 299, which recognizes uh, the federal capital territory as if it is a 37 state, and also Section 66 of the Electoral Act. And he said, a community reading, that is what it is called, a community reading of all these provisions will prove the point that you cannot say because somebody lost, in uh, uh, didn't get 25% in FCT, then it cannot be president. And he provided precedence. The law, precedence, you know, stare decisis is called. It's a major issue in law. I will law versus Shagari. Buhari's case, Ibrahim Adesun versus, he, he, he gave all of that. Number two, he said the case of the petitioners is based on IREV and BVAS, electronic transmission. He said, no, that's, that's, that can't stand. Because in any case, the law, you know, provides for manual transmission. And that you cannot say because of electronic transmission is an issue. Number three, he says the case that they are referring to in the U.S., that the evidence that is provided is inadmissible because it's not, you know, uh, 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 documented within our own jurisdiction here. Yeah? And as in any case, nowhere in that ruling is the word fine used. So he, he took on all of these issues, you know, and then concluded that the uh, application, the petitions amount to a crass abuse okay. of court uh, process. And that, you know, it should be dismissed, it should be disregarded. And that in any case, he's confident that the job of the court, right, is to ensure peace, not to cause chaos, not to cause anarchy. And that given precedents that he has cited and all of that, it will amount to, you know, causing chaos and anarchy. But people have taken that in a literal sense. Yeah, so he to mean a said, threat. Right. But it's not a threat. Right. So people should go to the uh, written address and read it and understand the context. Instead of just saying, oh, Tinubu wants to cause chaos. He wants to cause anarchy. So basically, That's the, not the, what the is job in the... of the judiciary is not to cause anarchy, correct? That's really the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, not, not to, not to uh, you right. know, uh, uh, add more tension to, to the environment. And, right. uh, Olani Kwekwe said, you need to see the context in which you use that Absolutely. phrase. And I don't agree with those people who think that it's a threat. A, 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 a counsel you know, before the court of law, cannot go in front of their lawsuits and threaten them. That is, that is unacceptable. Well, all right.